Alighting the train and strolling through the South Concourse, you encounter the first piece of the Leeds Welcome Art Trail. Windows of Leeds, which I ignored. I like to wander around a bit shooting background photos before concentrating on the main subjects. So I headed west and stumbled upon West Warren on Lisbon Street and the former Brotherton Chemical Company and Police Headquarters Brotherton House on St Paul Street. Both appealing for different reasons. Pleased with the discovery of Brotherton House and with enough footage to make a video on it, I turned back to the art trail. Windows of Leeds consists of two metre tall letters spelling the city's name, with each letter showcasing a local artist's work. The intention is for the designs to change throughout the year, exposing different artists. Support for the project comes from Leeds Business Improvement District, Network Rail and Leeds City Council. Though I couldn't find any Masonic Owls in the letters, so perhaps the council aren't involved. Instead of exiting the station at the main entrance, you can turn left towards the ticket offices and continue until you reach Witherspoons. Fortify yourself with a drink of your choice and when finished, leave by the back exit onto Princess Square and travel a short distance west where you'll find Metal Gear Rising Revengeance painted on the wall of the White Cloth Gallery, Air Street. If you're an alcohol enthusiast like the Falkirk Genius, another libation can be taken here as White Cloth is more bar than gallery. The mural is of Raiden, a character from the Metal Gear series of video games and was part of a three city promotion that London based mural artists, End of the Line, were commissioned to complete for the release of Revengeance in 2013. The other two cities with murals are London and Liverpool. From Air Street, head northeast towards City Square where we'll look at various works, all of which are overshadowed by the Art Deco magnificence of the 1937 reconstructed Queen's Hotel. The first sculpture is Thomas Brock's Black Prince. Industrialist and Leeds Mayor Thomas Harding commissioned Thomas Brock to sculpt the Black Prince. Brock took seven years and the statue had to be cast in Belgium as no British foundry could handle the size. It was unveiled in front of thousands of spectators on September the 16th, 1903. Thomas Harding also commissioned the Drury Dames. Alfred Drury's series of eight semi-draped female lamp bearers were originally arranged around City Square on points of the compass, each bearer representing morning or evening. The mid 1990s City Square refurbishment included plans to remove the dames, but a campaign to keep the statues resulted in them being retained and quote, present them in a more meaningful way. Up next, James Watt and John Harrison by Henry Furr. Walter Hook by Frederick Pomeroy and Joseph Priestley by Alfred Drury. Watt was a Scottish engineer synonymous with steam engines. Harrison invented the marine chronometer. Hook was an eminent Leeds vicar. And Priestley is associated with the discovery of oxygen. Above the entrances of the old post office are eight female figures by Henry Tanner. And oh look, a Masonic owl. There's a surprise, eh? Lastly is Flight by Lorne McKean outside number one City Square. The work was commissioned by Norwich Union.
from City Square head north to Bond Court, where you'll find Roger Burnett's The Bulls Player fenced off until December, while the court is refurbished. I asked some of the men working there if I could go beyond the fence and shoot some photos, and they very kindly allowed me in, while informing me the new luxury hotel behind the sculpture will cost £900 a night to stay in. I would ask the King of Glasgow to arrange a visit to the hotel, but as he can't even organise a few days in his hometown to shoot footage, there's not a lot of point. The short distance to Abtec House at 18 Park Road sees a deep freeze, including a centrally seated female figure with globe and staff of Mercury flanked by colonial trading scenes. At this point, if you haven't already fortified yourself with a drink or two, perhaps now would be a good time, because we're off to Trinity Shopping Centre. All shopping centres are hateful soulless edifices and should be avoided if possible. This isn't a particular slight at Trinity. The legendary furniture went mad who writes all the music for Erase Culture would no doubt have a dig at our next piece, Andy Scott's Equus Altus, as he was not enamoured by Scott's Kelpies in Falkirk. I have it on good authority because he told me that Furniture Went Mad is a bit of a Leeds United fan. Oh dear, it's another Andy Scott sculpture. Situated on Briggate outside Trinity Shopping Centre, this 5 metre sculpture portrays Minerva, the Roman goddess of commerce and weaving, representing the commerce of Trinity and Leeds textile industry during the Industrial Revolution. Is the Victoria Quarter Arcade on Vicar Lane a shopping centre and do the same disgust as Trinity? No, the architecture saves it that treatment. The glass roof which holds Brian Clark's stained glass was added to convert Queen Victoria Street into an arcade in 1989. Clark's work at 750 square metres is the largest expanse of stained glass in the UK. After craning your neck looking at the sky, it's time to scan the Kirkgate pavement and read a spot of poetry. The poetry, by local writers Anthony Dunn and Peter Spafford, stretches between Debenhams and Zara and onto the Briggate granite seats. We now reach my favourite part of Leeds, the area around the beautiful Corn Exchange and Kirkgate Market. Unfortunately, it's an area also losing its charm and decay due to regeneration. Graham Wilson's mural Cornucopia resides on the side of Crown Fisheries at 14 Call Lane. Painted in 1990 and sponsored by the Corn Exchange to coincide with their reopening, Cornucopia consists of Victorian townsfolk, the Roman goddess of abundance Copia, fresh produce, a cherub and the corn exchange. Walk east along New York Street, cross Duke Street and on the corner of Monroe House is Jane Lorry's Spix's Macaw. Lorry's piece is intended to highlight the plight of the bird that has become an endangered species. Outside Northern Ballet, metal men climbing from Yorkstone columns guard the bottom of St Cecilia Street. Out of the Earth by Ray Smith was commissioned by Leeds Council in 1995. As Windows of Leeds welcomes train passengers, Hello and Welcome to Leeds greets bus travellers at the bus station with an exuberant celebration of community. Artist Nathan Evans brought materials from nearby supplier Artificial to create this piece.
Tarquin will tell you that Einstein was a charlatan and proceed to tell you how he was right about Leon Britton, Greville Janner and Jimmy Savile etc. So don't bother questioning him. And also don't bother with any art that celebrates the charlatan Einstein. So in the vain hope he'll actually write something new for erased culture, I'll let you research this piece on Saxon Hawk House Templar Lane yourselves. Heading towards 93 Mabgate, I looked up and saw the brutal beauty of the former British gas offices beside New York Road. It was mesmerising. I stood and gazed at the carcass for far shorter than I wished, as rain began to fall and I still had one more artwork to visit. I searched to find out what would become of the offices, and it seems they will be converted to, surprise surprise, overpriced flats. Before reaching the final artwork, you pass Hope Foundry, where the impressive Mabgate entrance possesses an architectural favourite, Greek key pattern above its gateway. The end of our journey finds the Mabgate mural. Painted by the owner when it was Sir Mac Products, supplier of decorating goods, the people in the windows are said to have been Sir Mac employees.